What's up, what's up? This is your man, Umar Ali, joining you from Memorial Continental Hall, uh, the headquarters of the Daughters of the American Revolution. We're just um, maybe a football field or two away from the Washington Monument. And I just want to give my final uh, thoughts after attending the inauguration uh, and some of the protests today. And I will be f attending the uh, Women's March uh, tomorrow as well. I want to say that initially I got in line for the protest. Um, I was in line like an hour before I realized I was in line for the inauguration. I just rolled with it. And I went to the inauguration, and I'm glad I did. As someone that didn't vote for Donald Trump, as someone that's very troubled by the rhetoric and some of the stated policy of Trump, uh, it's, it, it, it's a frightening time uh, for many people in this country. However, uh, I still maintain those positions, but uh, as I mixed with the crowd, as I spoke to the crowd, I, I met some very interesting people. I talked to a young man behind me. He was adopted by a gay, le um, a lesbian Jewish couple. He's now wearing a yarmulke and he's studying uh, in Washington, D.C. and he's from Kazakhstan. So he's an Asian, uh, Jewish, um, LGBT raised Trump supporter. And he gave his thoughts on why he supported Trump. And another young man walked up to him who said, I'm here to watch history. And he, he said, I voted for Hillary Clinton. And I'll be going to a Planned Parenthood rally uh, within the coming days. Uh, I think in this country, we take for granted the peaceful transition of power. And we look in Gambia now. The president lost the election, he's not giving up power. And many of us had questions about the election, questions about WikiLeaks, questions about the Russians. But at the end of the day, we have a peaceful transition to power. And what we saw in Washington, D.C. today was the metro and the restaurants and the, uh, the, the whole city full of Trump supporters and Trump protesters on the metro together, in restaurants together, in coffee shops together. And there was a few terse back and forth words from time to time. But most of the time, people just sat next to each other cordially and peacefully. Um, and, 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 that's, and, that's, and that's a really great thing. And it speaks to the health and the vibrancy of American democracy, which we have to make better and extend to even more people. The violence that was shown came from a very, very small segment of what I call gray worm mess people. If you look at these anarchists, they tend to have the skin complexion of gray worm. Uh, from the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, and tend to have probably some of his same hygienic habits. Um, mostly kind of disaffected rich kids who were, uh, I don't know, in some kind of a theater. Uh, these are the people who will be least affected by any president because they're from the affluent, whether they uh, say it or not. And so I have very little respect for any violence that they bring. We saw in Ferguson, they committed uh, arson and violent acts, and black youth paid the consequences. Uh, and I hope that the Women's March tomorrow uh, doesn't face uh, stiffer policing because of the uh, action by some foolish uh, anarchist, uh, gray worm-esque people today. But I think what we saw today is the election didn't go the way we wanted it to, to go. Islamophobia is empowered anti-immigrant fervor is empowered. But when you, you know, people are not perfect and candidates are not perfect and parties are not perfect, you will never receive perfection in politics. And this is the dunya, the, what do you say in Arabic, the lower life. Uh, this is not the Akhira, this is not Jinnah, this is not paradise. So politics, you'll never get a perfect candidate. And, uh, you know, we got a candidate not just not perfect, we don't like him. But this is the democratic process. Uh, we have to respect it. We don't like it. Uh, it's very troubling. There's a lot of questions. But I think just to be there today for the peaceful transition of power, even if it's to someone I don't like, was something powerful and historic to witness. And I'm glad I got to friendly, uh, in a friendly manner, in a cordial manner, speak with Trump voters teenagers, young and old, and then go across the street and speak to protesters. And I had very cordial and warm conversations with both. And both are the type of people we need in America because these are the type of people that care about the country, that care about their fellow citizens, 
They care about what direction this country is going into and who will fight to make this country a better place. Obviously, the ideas espoused by the Trump side, 80, maybe 80, 90 percent of them I disagree with. But we, what we like is a concerned citizenry. And I think President Barack Obama, uh, I was very excited for him in 2008. As the helicopter flew off, I looked at the helicopter and thought of my ex Fatima, pregnant with my daughter Asia at the time, and uh, how we registered to vote and went to go vote for Obama. And uh, Obama was elected and uh, inaugurated while she was pregnant with Asia. And just think now Asia is this, is this full of life girl, full of personality and ideas. And now Barack Obama will be gone from the presidency and what he meant to this country, the things he did for this country. I didn't always agree with him. I adamantly disagree with the drone program. I adamantly disagree with the surveillance state uh, and many other things I disagree with him. But I think overall, you cannot say that Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama have not been about class, been about dignity and uh, overall steered this ship uh, in the right direction, even if we disagree at times. Uh, Trump and Trump has not shown any of the class of the Obamas, uh, but perhaps that's something he can learn from Barack Obama. I doubt it. I doubt it very seriously. At seven years old, you don't really change your stripes. But I contemplated on the Obama presidency as I looked at that helicopter in the sky of how enthusiastic I was about his candidacy how I had the Obama hat and the bumper stickers and clothing, how there was a store in St. Louis dedicated entirely to Obama gear, how whole aisles at Walgreens were dedicated to Obama gear, how people were so excited and people thought society was going to change a lot. And you know what? Society changed a little bit, didn't change a lot. Because America and the world does not change by political leaders. America changes by the people. The president can only make gradual modifications for, the, for, the, for good or bad. So Obama did not deliver the change a lot of people thought, but perhaps we had unrealistic expectations. And just as many of Obama's base were let down, I think Trump's base would be let down because it would be, Trump said today, I will never let you down. And I guarantee that's wrong. You'll let them down, as all politicians do as he negotiates with Congress, as he tries to get things done. And I think probably it's a good thing he doesn't always get his way, but Donald Trump will not always get his way and he will let his base down, just as Obama did. Because again, this is not about the great leader. This is, this is about this American democratic experience and about this messy society that we live in. And all societies are messy. Anyone saying I have an ideology which can create this perfected uh, orderly society, whether it be Dash with the tax theory ideology or whether it be an anarchist or a communist or a libertarian, um, they're selling you very foolish ideas. Society is messy, elections are messy, and people are messy. And as we stand here, this is the Daughters of the American Revolution building. We think of it that this revolution that was led against the British, that this revolution created this great human experience known as America, that we are all living in, many of us were born into, and this is just the next chapter in the American revolution. And so with that, I pray for the future of our country. I pray for President Obama, I pray for Donald Trump, and I pray for the peace and prosperity of America and the world.